Hey, we are one day late today. Usually I do my live streams at 1 p.m. Eastern Time on Wednesdays and today we are Thursday. So hope everybody's doing great. Uh, today we have a fun project. We're making pink flamingo jewelry. So this was a special request originally from Sasha Tammy. Uh, sometimes people ask for different things out of wire and I always love to tackle uh, new designs. It's uh, super fun. So I'm going to flip the screen and pull you guys up on my computer. Hi Amber. Hi Clarice. You guys hopped on at the same time. That's awesome. So I'm going to flip the screen and you can see our nice snowy outside. A nice cold snowy day in Montreal. And let's flip the screen and pull you guys up on the computer so I can see who is hopping on. So bring this up, get my channel, and you guys can see my sketches. And actually at the top, these were for Amanda who requested bird uh, uh, rings. So the bird ring tutorial is coming soon. I will just turn off my sound and pull you guys up. So here we have, hi Corey, how you doing? Nice. So uh, everybody is hopping on, hi Bonnie. And so today we are going to work on the pink flamingos. So this was my original sketch I put in the community section and there's all kinds of other ideas. And uh, I'll just play around with them, see what we come up with. And if there's one you guys particularly like, I can do a better uh, tutorial for it on the weekend. Another animal, yeah, animals are my jam. I've been making wire animals for like 30 years as earrings, rings, pins, bookmarks, uh, even ornaments, wedding cake toppers. So I love doing the animal designs. Uh, I, think, I think we're uh, a small group of people that enjoy the animals, but it's all good. I really love doing them, so that's fun. So uh, yeah, so where do we start? Ah, that's the question, so I'll get my tools. I have my amazing Zeron tools, which I love. So we're gonna get those tools. And then I have some pink wire. So I have rose gold and uh, this is, I forget, I think I ordered that on Amazon. Uh, Artistic Wire makes a nice rose gold. This is the 20 gauge, but I also have hot pink. So you guys decide which one should I start with, rose gold or hot pink? Let me know in the comments which ones that I should do. Uh, Corey says, I love birds. We used to have budgies and a cocktail. Okay, for cool, 17 years, that's a long time. Very nice. So let's move some of these tools over. You guys let me know if I should start with the hot pink or the rose gold. And then I'm also going to think about, I think I'll just start with a basic design. And then we'll go from there. We can do some more fancy ones after. Hot pink, let's do it. So here's the hot pink wire. And let's cut a piece. Uh, it's, sometimes it's hard to know how much wire to cut, but we can start with about maybe 12 to 15 inches of wire. Uh, always better to have too much than not enough. Bella says hot pink too. Hi, Bella. And let us start. I usually start with the eye. I just like starting near the top because I will do like a little loop at the top to um, uh, to hang it up with. Uh, once I've done all the designs and made a couple of tutorials and stuff, I will make some templates that you guys can download. Uh, sometimes there's a bit of a delay making the templates only because um, I like to perfect the designs first. Hi, Sharon. Uh, rose gold. I will do rose gold after for sure. Yeah, I think I think they're both beautiful. So let's start with the eye. We're just going to take this and make a little circle. Now these pliers, I love these are on pliers. They're not as fine as my other pliers. So what I have to do sometimes is just start the circle. And then if you want the circle smaller, you just give it a little bit of a tug and it makes the circle a little bit smaller. So that's a little hack if you want tiny circles. And then now we have to do the shape of the beak. So we're just going to take this, push it out a bit, um, let's make sure I have it out a little bit more and then we're going to push it down into a curve. So we're going to bring this down into a kind of a curve here. Now we can move it around a little bit. I don't want to make this too big so I don't want to run out of wire. And uh, we're going to bring that one down and then if we want to bend it back on a sharp angle, I'll get my flat pliers. So here we go. We're going to take the flat pliers. I'm going to push this out a little bit more and we're going to take this and then just bend it put at a 
really sharp angle. So hold it and push it with your thumb and that makes a nice little sharp bend there. And we're just gonna continue to push it back. And so that's the starting point of the beak. You can see it's a little bit pointy, which is cool. And then we are going to hold that with our round pliers and bring that down a little bit. Now we wanna make a little bit of a, I don't think you call it a chin. I don't know what you call this on a pink flamingo, but we wanna bend it up a bit to make this kind of curve thing here. So we're gonna do that. And then we wanna curve down the neck so we're gonna bring this one, put the round pliers in there and then just bring it down and bring this one around. So it makes a nice little S shape. Uh, this wire is beautiful to work with. I love the artistic wire. It's just such a great quality. Colors are gorgeous and um, it's easy to work with. So now we're gonna do this, bring this down to make this little short part that goes before the foot. And then we're gonna bring this straight down to make the leg. So here's the leg. Hi, Verdella. Nice, you're hopping on saying hi to everybody. Awesome, so that's just the straight leg there. And then we have to decide about the uh, length of the leg. So I don't really need to be it to be super long. So I'm gonna bend this one at an angle. Now here, I did these funny little flappy feet. I don't know if I love these. Some of the other ones I put beads on the feet. Some of them I just made like little circles on the feet. So let's see what we can do about that. We can even just, because it's small, I might just bend it back um, instead of doing the triangle. I just don't want it to look too weird. So I'm just gonna hold this and bend it straight back, okay. Uh, hi, Terry. There we go. Oh, if you guys don't know, a tree sap girl, that's Amber's. So Amber's a mo one of the moderators in my channel and a super valued member of the Wiremakers Club. And um, uh, she's her username is tree sap girl, but that's Amber, my friend Amber. So now we are going to take this and we are going to push this one back straight up. Kind of looks like a foot now. I'm not sure if I'm super happy with that way look, that looks. Let me just bend it down to see if it looks any better like that. Uh, I'm not sure. Anyways, we're gonna make other other kinds of feet and stuff and other, um, so we're just gonna bring this one up here and <laughs> nice. I love your purple hearts, Amber. There's That's so awesome. And uh, let's bring this one up here. And now we want to do the other legs. So I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm gonna keep this simple. It looks like a foot, but that's okay. So now we're gonna bring this one here and bring it back. So flamingos are funny. They have kind of like the leg goes back and forward. So we're gonna do that back here. And maybe I wanna bring it up. It could be behind or in front. It doesn't really matter. So now at sort of where the knee would be, which is sort of like a backwards knee thing and I'm gonna just bring it out like that. So this would be sort of the starting point of the flamingo, very basic. And then we can bend the, the foot down. So let's just bring this one over here and bend that one, maybe bring it over a little more so it's not too long and bend that down. Okay, and then we're going to, actually, I wonder what I, well, that might be kind of funny. I'm just thinking because I want to bend it back the other way. So I'm going to bring this to the front, actually, see how that goes. And then I'm going to bend this one back. Okay. And so, so perfect. It's fun, eh? The flamingo. And there's a lot of possibilities with that. I want to do one that's got like a lot of beads in it, too. I think that would be super cool. So we're going to bring this one straight across here. And then we're gonna bend this one up. So now I'll get the round pliers, bend it up here. And there we have the beginning parts of the flamingo. The pink is so pretty, I love it. So now we're gonna take this one, bring this to the back. And now we wanna curve a little tail thing. So we're gonna bring this, and this, how do you do the curves? You just take your finger and like kind of curve it around. So to show you on the picture, this is sort of like curved to the back here. So that's what we're doing here. And now we want to bend it towards the front again. So let's take our flat pliers again and then at about this position, 
just going to bend it like we did before. Push it with your, your uh, finger. Bring it here. And now we are going to hold this and bring this one around here. So this is looking good. There's our flamingo so far. And then we want to make a little bit of the wing. So let me get, I'm just going to look in my little basket of round forms and I'll get a pen and we're going to form the wing. So we're just going to hold this, bring it around and that makes a nice little curve there. So we're going to bring that one around here and then we can just like form this again. So we're going to take with their finger, just like bend it around, give it a little curve. The more you could do with your fingers, the better. And then that way you don't like scratch up the wire. So we're just going to kind of bring that one in. It's hard to access it a little bit. So that goes down there. And then we want to bend it back up. So I'm going to bend it upon itself so it, it has a nice sharp bend. Hold it with your flat pliers. Push it up. Push. And Drekkis Girl had me at Flamingo. yoo -hoo. Awesome. Was it the title of the video that attracted you? I'm curious. So, um, because when you post the live stream, you titled the video. So I titled it uh, Pink Flamingo DIY Jewelry. I think I titled it. So there we go. So that's the little wing. I could have made it a little bit longer, but it's not too bad. And maybe I'll just fix the angle a little bit. So I have my needle nose pliers, or they're called tweezer nose pliers, which are nice. So there we go. It's looking really good, guys. So now we are going to pull that one around a little bit more, and then we want to bend it up for the neck. I guess the neck could have even been a little bit longer, but that's okay. This is just a prototype. So now let's hold this with the round pliers, and we want it to be, have a nice curve, so we're going to bring it around. Hold it with the round pliers and bring it like out this way. So there we go. So there we go with that. And now if we find that that's too far over, we can just adjust it a little bit. So let's just adjust it a little bit. Bring that one up. And there we have the beginning points of the flamingo. And after the live stream, I'll put photos of these on Discord in the Let's Get Wired, not Let's Get Wired, in the post live stream section. And I'll also post a picture in the community section and in the Wire Makers Club on Facebook. So uh, whether you're just on YouTube or Facebook or Discord, you can see pictures of the finished work, which will give you a better idea of how to... Um, make them. Bonnie says loving it. Thank you. So now we had to bend this one over and up to make the loop. So let's just take this, bend it over, and then we're going to bend this straight up to make a loop to hang it on. So with the round pliers, or you could use the flat pliers. We could even get in with the needle nose pliers if we wanted to. Let's just get in there and bend it straight up. It's hard to access there, so I'm going to actually go from this side, sort of opposite of what I usually do. So we're going to do that. So that's straight up. And then this one, we just want to bring it around here. The neck doesn't have to be very thick anyways, so let's just do it right here. And then we're going to pull this one around. And then we're going to clip that flush. So let's get our cutters. Hi, Kathy. Cute, thank you. So let's get this one and Cassandra, hello, hello. So let's get this one in here and clip it. It went flying. Oh, I think it landed in a box on the other side of my dining room. So that's cool. So there we go, the flamingo. And you could put a bead there if you want to, but you don't have to. So now to do a loop at the top, I'm just going to bring this one across. Actually, you could do it and twist it or we could just do it simple. I'll do my simple loop. We're just going to cut this to three eighths to half an inch and then I'm going to get my round pliers and I am going to pull, whoops, I'm going to pull this one back and around. Okay, we're going to pull this one back and around and then we're going to Close that up. So there is our very first flamingo. Let me bring it up closer so you guys can see it. 
Here, I'm just going to bring this one up here so you can see it. There's the flamingo. So that turned out really well. And like I said, I'll put a better photo in the community section after. So flying wire, I know, eh? it could be a game. Hi, Stella. Perfect. Thanks for looking for next lovebirds. Yes, yes. So the love, the, this is sort of like what the lovebird would look like. Uh, it's, um, I think it was a dove. I think that's what Amanda said. I forget what she said now. So now let's try another one. I like the idea of these hanging down, but I also like the idea of putting a bead in there. Um, there's so many of these. There's this one too. Actually, this one with the spirals is cute too. Let's do that one. So I'm going to get the... Uh, rose gold wire. Let me see which is easier to work with. This one is, ooh, this one's way too soft. I think that's aluminum. So let's do this one. And uh, very nice. Thanks, guys. So let's try number two. This is with the rose gold. So let's pull this one a little bit. I probably has to be a little longer if we're doing spirals. So we're just going to pull that one out, clip it, and we can, I have to think now because I haven't thought ahead of how I'm going to do this. Uh, if there's a spiral there and this one here. Hmm. And I like the idea of doing a dangle. So let's do a bunch of things in this one. Okay. Nice hearts, Bonnie. Thank you. So let us take this and Dawn. Hi, Dawn. Let us start. Where do we want to start? Um... I'll just start at the top again. I think that's the easiest thing to do. So rather than do an eye, I'm going to just leave space to do a spiral. So let's try that. And uh, I'm going to get my round pliers. And I'll just do a little, maybe I'm going to move this because it's a little distracting. So I'm going to just bend this at a little bit of a right angle. Bring it down to start forming the head. And then bring this one out and down to form the beak. Hopefully there's enough of an angle there, so up and down. And then we are going to bend this one back. Bend it back. And we are going to get the round pliers. I'm getting stuck in my cords here. So these are the round pliers. I had to like mark them because all these Zeron pliers look the same because they all have the same color uh, plastic on the handles. These are super comfy, by the way. The plastic is really, really soft. I, I really like these pliers. And so now we're going to bring this one up, but I want to make it big enough so the spiral will show. We'll see. We're going to exaggerate it a little bit. And, oh, I don't know if this... It's a little funny looking. The beak is maybe not long enough. So let's bring this one up and down a little bit more. Now it looks like a, a hawk or something. I'm not sure what's happening with the shape here, but we're going to see just to have a little I idea. Okay, so there, that way. And then we're going to bring this one around. Oh, my first one worked so well. I'm having trouble with the shape now. But let's go to bring this one around and around. So let's just see how that looks. We bring that one around. Sometimes it helps to actually trace it too. I mean, I could do I could do that. So we could bring that one up up and down. Up and down here. Yeah, if you want to trace it, I will I will put the pat I will put the templates together at some point. I just have to, you know, kind of get around to it. So I'm going to just do this and then I'm just going to do one loop at the bottom. So let's just do one loop and we're going to bring this one around here. Uh, chats, learn. there we go. Perfect. So now we're going to bring this one around and yeah, let me know in the comments what you guys are working on, uh, what sort of wire art and jewelry projects you're working on. I'm always curious to see. And then if you're not already a member, join the Wire Art and Jewelry Makers Club on Facebook because there's so much inspiration in there. People are posting such beautiful work. It's really, really nice. So now let us get this one here and just bring this one down a little bit. 
And like I said, it's easier sometimes to tr trace the shape. And then I'm going to take this one and bend it up. So we're gonna bring this one up, okay, and around. And instead of doing a wing, I wanna to try to do like a kind of a spiral. Well, it, it is a wing, but it's more like a spiral type wing. So let me get my cone to help me with the shape of that. Okay, perfect. So now let us bring this one around. Oh, thanks, Dawn. Yeah, it's it's. you guys can learn from my mistakes, which is good because uh, often in the live streams, I, um, I kind of like try new things and sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. So I appreciate you guys' patience with watching, you know, me kind of sometimes struggle a lot. Sometimes it's easier. So we're going to bring this one down this way. And now I'm going to try to do a kind of a spiral thing, but I have to figure out if I want to bend it straight back or across. So I think I'm just going to try to do another sharp bend here. Uh, thank you, Amber, for mentioning that. Yes, if you guys in the in the chat can stay on track with wire art and jewelry making uh, subjects, that would be great. And um, I try to stay I try to stay as focused on the project at, at hand as much as I can. I what I really would love you to guys to do is give me any feedback and suggestions on the projects, any ideas you have for, you know, wire art and jewelry making supplies and and projects and stuff that would be much appreciated. So there we go. So we're going to bring this one around here and we're going to just maybe just do like three spirals and see if it works. I'm not sure how well it's going to work. Okay. Now, let's just take this and bring this one up and we're going to bring this one around one more time to make it look like a bit of a spiral. It's kind of working not too bad. It's hard to access with pliers, so you can use the end of a pen to bring that one around. And then we've got like kind of three things going there. And then maybe I'll just bring this one. I'm going to get the end of my pliers. What brand of wire am I using? So this is the Artistic Wire by Beadalon. Uh, this is the wire I use the most, especially for my uh, YouTube uh, tutorials. Um, sometimes they send me samples of their new wires and stuff, which is amazing. And um, even if they weren't sponsoring uh, some of my videos, which they they sponsored the live wires for the win competition, which was amazing. But even before I connected with the brand, uh, this was my favorite wire brand because I just find the quality is really good. And uh, I've tried other wires, wires. I've tried the para wire, which I don't particularly like the quality and the colors as much. But everybody has their own preferences for wires. So you guys let me can let me know in the comments what you, what is your preferred wire brand, uh, because people have different different opinions of which wires they like the best. But for me, the um, this one is the the artistic wire is the best one. So uh, this is quite soft. It's not it's not I wouldn't call it half hard. A lot of the artistic wires are quite soft. The only harder wires in the artistic wire is the brass which is more like a half hard and the uh, stainless steel, of course, which is very hard. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. I just have to see how I'm going to do it. Yep. So I'm going to bend this around the top. I think the neck could have been a little longer, but that's okay. And then bring this one. Maybe I should have done it from the front. You know what? I think I'm going to, I'm going to backtrack. I'm going to actually bring it over to the front. So let me just straighten this out a little bit. Sometimes I have to, sometimes I have to backtrack. So we're going to bring this one here and straighten this one out a little bit. Okay, to there. And then, no, I'm going to straighten out a bit. Sometimes it's just like a little tweak like that makes a big difference because I want the wire to end up like at the front. So I'm going to take this and now I'm going to bring this one around to the front and then I'm going to form the spiral. And now it's too late to change my mind. If I wanted to change it again, the neck is a little short. Uh, I'm a little disappointed with the, the length of the neck, but it maybe looks more like a goose. But it's okay. We're going to do our best with it. 
Uh, make a flamingo ring. I'll see what I could do, Sharon. I'll, if I have time, I'll try to do the ring. And um, I'll kind of work my way through some of these designs. But I think a ring would be super cute, too. Great idea. So now we're going to do this. And usually I just put this on a cone to do the spiral. But this is really tiny. So I don't know if that method is going to work for this. But I'm going to wind it around a little bit with the pen. Kind of work my way up. And then maybe I'll get my round pliers and bring this one around. Okay, bring this one around. And then I'm going to clip that there. Oops, there we go. So now let us, it's very, very tricky when it's so small to make the spiral. And perfect, still looks cute, thank you. Yeah, sometimes it's just a little tweak, like the length of the neck uh, makes a huge difference to how you read the design. That's the magic of graphic design, too, you know? It's just sometimes things can come across uh, with the smallest amount of lines. Minimalism uh, is sometimes the best. So now I'm just trying to fix up this spiral here. To, uh, it was very small, so it's hard to get in there. We're going to bring this one over and try not to scratch it. So that makes a little cool spiral. I like the spiral idea. I think it's cool. Um, hopefully that's in the right position. We can maybe push it up a little bit. We have to pull that in there. And then sometimes if you just hold the spiral and just like wiggle it, you can get it up a little bit more. So there's that. And then now same thing. Let's just do a very uh, simple uh, thing at the top, a little a loop to hang the... Um, the pendant on or the earring, depending on what you make. So, oh, someone says this is a masterpiece. I wish I could read your username. If you want to pop, if you want to pop your username in the comments, uh, the person that said this is a masterpiece, uh, go for it. Uh, and otherwise, I cannot read that username. It's code. It's a it's a secret code. Um, Debbie says, on this one, the neck being shorter is perfect for a pendant. Cool. Yeah, so it doesn't, yeah, so I guess it's not too, too long. Uh, I think it'll still be cute. And once we do the legs, it should read more like a flamingo. So let's see. So here's the little loop at the top. I do like the spirals. I think they're super cute. So here, uh, how can I bring this up to show you guys so far? Here it is so far. So now we're going to put some legs on there. And I was thinking just to dangle them like that. So let's see what we can do. Let's remove that. I will get, we might even have enough wire left just to reuse this piece of wire. And what we have to do is just put on my thinking cap and figure out how to dangle them down. Because I think if we, let's try it this way. So we're going to... Move this over. My name is mostly Cookie. I was able to change it to Cupid. Cool. So thank you, Cookie, for your great uh, feedback. And now we are going to take this uh, flamingo earrings. You can make any of these. Actually, this would make a perfect earring. You could definitely do this as an earring. It's a nice, simple design. And you can make it a little bit smaller, too. And I'm going to try one with a bead after. I think that would be cute as earrings too. So let's bend this one back and then around to make a decent size loop. This is an experiment. So if we made like a little loop like that, and then we're going to hook it into here. See what that does. And then the legs will dangle. So let's see what they do. Hopefully they're going to hold in place. So... There we go, perfect. Hi, Bernice. Thanks for hopping on. So now let's bring this one down and see what we've got so far. So this would be the legs. And then now we have to bend one out. So let's hold this in shape, in place. Connie. Hey, Connie, how are you doing? So I just sorry, I'm just trying to <laughs> I'm just trying to read comments. It's hard to multitask. So now let's just hold this in place. Bring this one. I'm gonna hold that flat and bring that one back. So that way this little end is it's kind of closed. You could twist it together there. Hopefully it's not like necessary. 
And then this would be like that. And then we want to bend, one is going to go straight and one's going to go down. So you could put a bead on the end if you wanted to, or you can just do, maybe you could do little spirals. Would that look silly? That might look a little silly. It might be overkill, but at the same time, it might be fun. So let's try that. So we're going to bend this and let's do get this one and hi sandy so cute thank you so we're going to take this one and then see what we can do with this it might look a little weird but we're going to try it so because i like the, the idea of the theme of the spirals so we're going to take this one around i can always clip it too if i wanted to let me just see how it's looking kind of cool okay so now we're just going to make that one a little bit bigger bring that one around and then uh, it's tricky to hold these in place I just want to pull that so it's a little tighter so now I'm going to clip it flush we'll just give that a little clip perfect and then we'll get our flat pliers and flatten it out that's cute there we go. So there is a bead might help hold the leg vertical. Put a bead. I think a bead would be cute too on the end as well. I'll definitely going to put some beads on some of the future ones. I think for now this one's okay. Now if I want to get these the same size, you know, maybe what I could do is just bring this down so I could bend it in the same place. Just to have an idea. Okay, so then we just let it go. So now we have a measurement to the size. We're going to bend this here. Yeah, I definitely like the idea of doing beads. I will put some beads for sure. Yeah, the weight would hold it down. You're right. So now let's bring this one around. And... Yeah, I pulled my beads out. So we'll for, let's do beads for the next one. I think that would be nice. So we're going to bring this one around here. Just keep doing the spiral and try to get them even that's the hard part okay so we're going to bring that one and bring that one in here it's a little hard to to tighten it up a bit but we're going to do our best so there we go love the dangling legs oh yeah the cow with the dangling legs was so fun yeah, I love that, Corey. You shared that in the Wire Makers Club. That was so cute. So, and if you guys want to see pictures of other people's work that they're doing based on the tutorials, a lot of people post in the Wire Makers Club. And sometimes people, if they don't have Facebook, they'll send me, email me photos of their work, and then I'll post it in the community section. And also on Discord, you can post it pictures of your work although I'm I have to admit I'm not as often on discord but certainly after the live streams I'll post pictures of what uh, we've done on the, for the day so now these are the funny legs but now we have to bend one so it goes in yeah softer wire is is definitely easier to use for this type of design because you really want to be able to make smooth curves with it so uh yeah the this artistic wire is really good for that so now find out where the kind of knee would be or whatever, and then we're going to bend it, like push it, like give it a good push so it makes a sharp angle. That's the hard part. And that's the hard part with a soft wire is to make a sharp angle. But if we bend it that way, okay, that is super cute. <laughs> it's really funny. I like the spiral legs. They're hilarious. So there is, let me get a, paper so we can show you on a plain background there we go there's perfecto so there she is I like the spiral feet doing beads is a great idea too so we'll we'll do gonna do one now with beads after that so we so far we have the rose gold one and the hot pink one so that's fun uh, Connie says flamingo is so pretty. One of my sisters loves them. Nice. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, you'll definitely have to make uh, one for your sister. Definitely. Can you try making a spider? I have some spider tutorials on my channel. Uh, you could definitely search my channel and find the spiders. Sorry, I'm just taking a sip of wire. Um, 
I know there's one particular person in the wire makers club that is deathly afraid of spiders. So I stopped making spiders uh, tutorials. So, uh, and anytime uh, there's a, a picture of a wire spider that pops up in the wire makers club, I actually don't comment or like it because I don't want to pull it up on the algorithm. So for those of you who didn't already know, um, I don't not allow spiders in the wire makers club, but I definitely ignore them. So, because <laughs> some people are deathly afraid of spiders, <laughs> just out of respect. Um, 20 gauge. Yes, it was 20 gauge wire. Yeah. So now let's see what we could do. This was a cute idea too, to do like a pin with lots of beads in it. I think I like that idea and either to put like chains with beads or beaded legs. So let's try one like that. And I was even thinking it would be a cool pin. So why don't we go all out and do that? So here's my, how I keep my earring hooks, my plugs on the back. And these pins are amazing. I bought a lifetime supply of these straight pins uh, 30 years ago, because I had to make a wholesale purchase from China and I ordered it like 10,000 of these pins. Uh, otherwise they wouldn't have manufactured them for me. And so I resell these in my Etsy DIY shop. If anybody wants like nice, small, discreet pins to use with wire jewelry, these are amazing. They're better than the bar pins because they're more discreet. And so my daughter hates spiders. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people are afraid of spiders. So I just, like I said, I just ignore them and hope they go away. So I'm not afraid of them, but I know a lot of people are. So let's try to do a one of these. So I'm going to start with an outline that's about um, 18 gauge. So let's go for it with the 18 gauge wire. Is this 18? Yeah, this is 18 gauge wire. I'll make it in gold this time. We'll do something different. Uh, yeah, a lot of people don't like spiders. Arachnophobia is real. So there we go. Let's pull this open. And I'm going to go now. Good night. Oh, so it's late in your time zone. So night, night, cookie. Have a good sleep. I have lots of fun dreams about flamingos. So now we are going to make a, a pin with a... Uh, oh, this is... Oh, I shouldn't make it silver. I shouldn't make it gold. This is silver. So let's backtrack and get some silver wire. There we go, that makes more sense. So let's cut a nice piece of the uh, silver wire. Actually, it doesn't have to be too big because we're making the legs out of something else. So maybe not even 12 inches is probably fine. So let us do our flamingo. So, but it's, so it's big enough to put this pin on. We're going to have to figure out how we're going to do that. So where do I also want to finish it? So I'll actually want to finish it on the back and I will go ahead and just leave a little bit extra here and I'm going to start with the neck. So now let's just go ahead and bring this up and around and make sure it's going to be big enough, tall enough, but I don't want it too huge either. So this will go across the back. This might be a little bit, um, might be a little bit short, but we're just gonna play with it. That's the thing with these, you know, when I do the templates, I use these as a base, but if, if I see it needs a little tweaking, I can do that after. So now we're gonna form the kind of beak thing. I could do a little loop for the eye, or I could try to do something with beads after. So maybe I'll just leave the eye for now. I'm gonna bring this one across and down okay and then bend it back up for to make a nice sharp bend for the beak so we're just going to take this and bend it push it push it hard with your fingers so it makes a sharp bend push it there and then we're going to take this one and bring it around okay so we're going to bring this one around maybe i'll get this one out of the way so it's not distracting. Okay, perfect. So now let us go ahead and bring this one around and push that down. And then we're going to bring this, bend it a little bit. I'm having trouble with these shapes. Uh, 
yeah, we're gonna bring it and then down and up. So sometimes it's good to like really examine the picture just to see about how the shapes go. And sometimes, of course, when I'm doing it in the opposite position of what the picture's in, it's a little more difficult. So we're gonna bring this one here and then bring this one around. So that's good. We're gonna bring this one around a little bit more. Uh, the neck maybe also is a little bit short again, but if that's the case, we could try to make it a little longer. I could always straighten this out a bit if we do need to make it. Whoops, let's get the other pliers. I'm gonna, if we do need to make it a little bit longer, we can just straighten it out gently and around here. And we can always like get the round form and just fix it up a little bit. There's always ways to fix things, especially because this is going to be beaded. So you're not going to really even uh, see like if there's any little problems or glitches. So let's do this, bring this one around and then that one around here. Okay, we're going to bring that one around here, it's starting to look like an ostrich, but <laughs> that's life. Okay, so this to here. Now we're gonna make the body part and then I should do the loops two for the legs. Otherwise I can just probably, we might be able to just hang them directly in the beaded thing. So you know what, I'm not gonna do loops this time. I'm gonna try it a little bit different because um, Connie says, do you ever mix colors of wire? Uh, I have done some a little bit of mixing colors of wire. I know there's some people in the group too in the wire makers club that do a lot of like beautiful mixes of different tones of wire, especially with the antique uh, colors. Uh, some of them are gorgeous, especially people that do wire weaving. Uh, a lot of them do some really, really beautiful work. So, so I'm actually not a wire, wire weaver. So I don't have a lot of experience with that, but some of the people in the group just do spectacular weaving. It's really very impressive. Okay, so this one, I think I'm gonna just bring that over a little bit more, bring that one up here. And then I should be tracing a shape for this, but I'm just, I'm just gonna go for it. And then we're gonna, oops, we're gonna bring the tail down. Uh, birds photo stand on the tree know how to sending it here oh you have a picture if you want to share photos uh, anytime you could send me photos to info at heatherboydwire.com that's just my email and uh, so yeah if ever you want to send me photos uh, please I would love that so there's always uh, lots of inspiration out there so this is going to come up and down the shape is a little bit wonky let me just bring it here Actually, this one makes more like a, a maybe I'll maybe I'll just fix this one up a little. He, she looks a little chubby. So let's just bring this one on here, and we're gonna bring this one here, and I'm just gonna try to do it this way, just to see if it helps to have the have the um, drawing handy. Yeah, I think it does help a little bit to use the drawing, and doesn't have to be perfect, but. Yeah, this is getting a little bit distorted. So sometimes when you like try to think too much, then it then you get confused. It's actually really funny because I was watching a show with my friend yesterday called um, Young Sheldon. It's based on the uh, inspired by the Big Bang Theory. So it's Sheldon when he's younger, and there were, this episode was actually featured Bob a Bob Ross clip of Bob Ross uh, painting, which is why my friend showed it to me, but uh, the theme of the show is how, like, when you overthink things, you get a mind block, and um, there was a name for it. It was the young girl was playing uh, baseball, and she was trying to pitch the ball, and she kept messing up, and the coach is like, well, just stop thinking of it. You, you have a case of, like, the way he named it, but it was something about overthinking things, and I thought, well, yeah, I mean, then that's that's true for anything we do. When we overthink it, you could definitely get mind blocked. So that's why I try not to overthink these things when I'm doing them. So now, um, mermaid earrings. I have done some mermaids. I definitely have done some mermaids on my channel. So like uh, with uh, anything that you're looking for that you think I might have done or would like me to do, you can go to the search bar on my channel and look up 
look up any of these designs. So uh, yeah, because a lot of them I've done already. So now what I want to do is, I don't want this, this part to be straight across. Usually what I do is I would put the pin straight across here, but now I'm wondering if I can do it in a way that I loop this around. Okay, let's just try this. I don't usually do it this way, but I might be able to do it this way. Go here, I loop it here, and then I'm going to attach it. So what I do is I take this and bring this one around. Forget if I should do it to the front or back. And then I take the pin and stick it in there. But let's go to the other side first. So we're gonna also bring this one around here to here. And then the idea is to hook the pin in here. So what I wanna do is take this, hold it in place, bring this one around. You could also add the pin after uh, once it's already beaded, but this is how I usually add pins. So I'm gonna hold this here. I'll be missing your comments for a couple of minutes while I focus on this. So we're gonna bring this one around. And now we're going to put the pin, so I put the pin through that loop here. So we're gonna put the pin here and then bring it around. It's a little bit tricky. And get that to stay in there. Okay, I'm gonna bring that one around here. And then we wanna bring this one over to this side and see I bent this a little, little too much too early. So I'm gonna straighten that out a little bit. And then this would go straight across here and it will be hidden by the beads, but the idea is I do want there to be a bit of a curve above it. So we're gonna bring this one here, put this one across here and then hold this and bring it through and twist it. So we're gonna bring that one through here, put the pin in here. I have other tutorials that will show you more clearly what I'm doing here. Uh, if you wanna like search my channel for uh, brooches, uh, I do have a couple of tutorials and I will link them up in the description of this video so you can see how I attach the, bead, the, the pin because it's tricky doing wire pins and having the pin be discreet. So this is this is a good thing to know to do it. How, I mean, it's more effective with um, beaded brooches because you can hide the pin a little more, but I do have quite a few designs that I make um, where I don't have a lot of beads on it, but it's the, the pin is actually hidden because I use a thicker wire. So now we're gonna bend it around the pin end. And the reason I'm doing that is so the pin won't flip back and forth. And we're going to do this. So Michelle hopped on. Hi, Michelle. And Heather wins. <laughs> there we go. Beat the mind blocks. So there we go. So we're going to clip that. Pick those bits off the floor after the live stream. Bring this one around. And to tighten it, you just take your pliers and you give it a little like half turn. And that tightens it up. So that's another little hack. And this one's got like a little bent out of place now, but we can hold this and then twist, rotate it a bit. So if we want to hold this, that's the key is just to get it like to sit straight now. And then these you want to sit over each other. And then now this one, let's bring this one to the back. And I think that's good. We're just going to clip that one off there. So then we can start beating it. So once you have the basic shape done, you can do this for any animals. I have cats that I've done like this. That's the tutorials that I have, or I think I have a cat. I have a little car. Uh, we did we did some designs like this in the 10 day wire, uh, no, the 10 day bead soup challenge where I did some beaded brooches uh, in this style. So you can definitely check that video out below. I'll, I'll link it up below as well. So here is our basic shape for a pin. It's a little on the large side, but some people like large pins. And then there's the pin on the back that you would just hook in. So that's cool. Hi, Lydia. And there we go. So we're going to do this. I've copied outlines on a copier, smaller to make earrings. Perfect, exactly. So I have a bunch of templates in my Etsy DIY shop. And any of those you can print out and reduce them on either on a photocopy shop or on a, you could uh, put them on a word page and, and reduce them. Or there's a free program called Canva where you can actually like um, 
import images and make them smaller. So, so any of the things I've done on my channel, if they're not earrings, you can make them into earrings. So there we go. There is our basic shape for the flamingo. Turned out pretty good. Bring it up closer, and now we are going to beat it. Mustafa, is Mustafa on? I am missing comments. Yes, hey Mustafa, how are you? Welcome. So let's get some nice beads. I'm actually gonna get a little plate to put the beads on so we can see them. And there we go. Here's a pretty little plate. This is Mimi's plate that she usually uses for lunch, but she's not here. So let's go ahead and put some beads. So let's see what we have for pink beads. I have hot pink beads. I have lots of hot pink beads. I have, whoops, that one disappeared. That's a cat's eye bead. I have lots of little, let's get a bunch of the little hot pink beads. This is the fun part that takes, so this is the time, this is the part where you can go make yourself a cup of coffee, um, a tea, go to the bathroom, uh, do some star jumps, whatever you feel like doing, and I will get prepared to put a bunch of beads in the body. So I'm gonna see what I have. I have a bunch of, um, these are like faceted beads, which I love, the glass beads, and then the hot pink beads. I have the, the little cat's eye beads, which are nice, the little pink cat's eye beads, which I love. We're gonna put those in there. And then I'm gonna dig into some other bead trays because I know I have some other hot pink ones somewhere. I'm just not 100% sure where they are. Um, oh, I have some medium size cat's eye beads. So let me get those. Uh, where's the end? Okay. I'm just gonna cut the end of this because I have all these beads here that I keep, these are my favorite beads, cat's eyes and miracle beads. So let's get those ones. And let me see what else I have. I think mostly these are just duplicates of what I've had. Oh, I have all these that are uh, more hot paint uh, miracle beads, which I love there. I have a couple of larger cat's eye beads. And I have, these are the, the eight millimeter miracle beads. So we have lots of beads. Okay, while well, doing history homework. Ooh, history. That was not my best subject at all. Um, yeah, I was not the best history person or even art history because I do not have a good memory for names and dates and all that type of thing. So history was not my favorite subject. It's definitely interesting. I just couldn't remember everything. So now I have lots of hot pink stuff. Look at all this stuff. So I have these and I have, these aren't really hot pink, but I have some other little, little hot pink beads that I'm not sure where I got them. I'm just gonna to try to pull some up here. Oh, these are sort of hot pink, not really. These are like, they're kind of more peachy, but they're actually more like flamingo colors. This, this looks like a pink flamingo color exactly like a pink flamingo color which is cool and I have some smaller ones like that I have a whole string of pink flamingo beads who knew so let's just get a bunch of those and then I think we're going to be ready to bead guys these are really nice I like these ones they're like a different kind of hot pink they're like fluorescent pink more and what else do we have well these are fun I probably won't use these but these are fun they look like little a licorice all sorts candies. So miracle beads are made out of acrylic. Uh, they're plastic, but they're so beautiful. They're very, um, they almost look like they glow in the dark. So, and they're very lightweight, which is amazing. And they're what, people that know me know they're my favorite bead uh, because they're really beautiful colors, which is uh, really, really nice. So, oh. Just drinking water. So um, yeah, Miracle Beads are one of my favorites and I use them in a lot of my tutorials. Okay, yeah, Miracle Beads are amazing. Neon pink, you're right. They're more like neon pink, but they also look a lot like pink flamingo colors. So now 
This is the part that's going to take us a while. So we're going to cut a piece of 22 gauge wire. You could also use 24, uh, whatever floats your boat. And don't worry if you don't cut it long enough because you can always add another piece. So that's not a problem. I've uh, taken metal outline style cookie cutters and outlined them on a paper to reduce some excellent idea, Connie. That's a fabulous idea for a... Um, if you want to do interesting shapes, uh, you could definitely do that. You could take pictures out of magazines and put tracing paper and trace them, which is cool. I've also pulled up images on like Google or copyright free images on sites like Pexels and Pixabay. And I just put the tracing paper directly on the screen and I trace them that way. So the sky is the limit for templates. Yeah, there's so many things you can do. So now, why don't we just start, let's do some big beads and little beads. So I'm just going to start by, well, why don't we attach the wire first? So let's go ahead and, yeah, yeah, so tracing paper is your friend when you want to trace some images and stuff. Yeah, uh, did you mention miracle beads in the past? Yeah, miracle beads are fabulous. And they haven't been around that long. When I started making jewelry, uh, the beads that were more popular were cat's eye beads. Uh, which for a while were really hard to find, um, but now they seem to be coming back in style. You're able to find them a little more, so so that's cool. Um, I'm just going to check. Uh, also, I have my friend Allison's beads here. Let me see if Allison has any pink beads. She does. Woo! So there we go. So thank you, Allison, for these pink beads. Let me pull some out of here. And these look cool too. These look like a little bit like those crackle beads, which I honestly don't usually love using. So you know what? I'm not going to use the crackle beads. I don't know if you guys know crackle beads, but they can explode and they can break. So I no longer use crackle beads anymore because they're, they're useless. And because uh, even if you have just one that breaks, uh, you're playing Russian roulette if you use these in your jewelry projects because... You never know when they're going to break. They're just the manner of the bead. They're made in a way that they look, have this shattered kind of quality, but they literally will shatter. So these are going in the garbage right now. Boop, done. So those are gone. I'm not using those beads. And I'm going to get uh, as many little beads. I have some little pink seed beads, which are great. So we're going to pull out these pink seed beads. I can grab more seed beads after. So that's from... Allison's stash of pink beads and then she also has these these are more red so ooh, those are cool but no I think we won't use the red ones so there we go I don't buy them anymore either good Corey yeah they're, they're I'm actually shocked they even still sell them because I've had several projects where the beads have broken and I'm just like this is so useless so now I do not use them anymore so let's just put a bunch of beads on there these might clash to a certain extent but they also might look good so that's the thing with with uh doing multi beads you know sometimes you think oh those are not going to look good together but once you've done the whole thing it might look good it also might look awful so let's just do it and try it uh yeah about the crackle beads yeah i do not use those anymore uh lydia has to go finish history yay good luck with your history uh, so now we're just going to, all we have to do is just add these. So I'm just going to bring this one in here and then wind this one around and then bring this one back and through again. And then we're going to add more beads. I like the 22 gauge wire. Often I'll wind these with 24 gauge wire, but I just find the 22 has more substance to it. So I really do prefer it. So let's go ahead and add some other beads here. We'll start, we'll do a faceted bead and we'll do some other beads. Um, maybe another miracle bead, maybe, no, maybe, yeah, maybe a I'm trying to alternate like the style and stuff, like the kind of beads. So let's do that. Good to know about exploding beads. Yes, do not buy exploding beads. And I hope the brand doesn't come after me, but it's it's truth. Like you shouldn't be selling stuff like that. Like they're gorgeous. They're beautiful. They've been selling them for years, but they 
if, like I said, if it's Russian roulette, so if there's even a one chance in uh, a million that it's going to break, well, maybe not a million. That's that's like not very likely. But if there's a chance in a hundred, it's going to break. It's definitely you do not want to use them. So now we're going to just keep going around and that, that home and put them in the oven. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to make your own crackle beads either, unless you're doing it as a science experiment. But to use them in, in finished jewelry is, I if the jewelry gets any wear and tear, but even if it doesn't get wear and tear, it can, you know, when things go also from hot to cold, especially in a climate like in, where I am in Canada, um, Say I was wearing something with uh, crackle beads and I went outside today, it's like minus 15, and then I came back inside, the contrast from hot to cold, uh, or cold to hot, they're going to explode. I had that happen with my eyeglasses before. I went swimming at a pool in Montreal and when I went, it was a freezing, freezing cold day, winter, and I, when I went from outside to inside in the change room in the pool or the pool area, my glasses uh, cracked. Uh, so that tells you how cold it gets in Montreal. Uh, so I would not be wanting to use those crackle beads, uh, especially in a climate like this. So uh, I want to do marbles. Yes, apparently you can do marbles like that. And I don't know what if the finished marbles are uh, that breaky as crackle beads, but uh, maybe the fact that marbles are thicker, uh, maybe they wouldn't. Um, maybe they wouldn't explode. I don't know, Mustafa. Do you have more information about that? Because uh, I'm not sure if they would, if they would explode or not the marbles. But I've definitely heard of people putting marbles in the oven to do that crackle effect. Yeah. So I've never tried it. I've never tried it. Uh, the only things I've put in the oven is I used to put LPs in the oven because there was a trend a few years ago where you could put old records in the oven and manipulate them into making bowls. And so one year, I always give DIY gifts to people for Christmas. So one year, everybody got a, a bowl made out of a LP probably my old like Pat Benatar records or one of those things. And uh, everybody got one for Christmas. So that was super, super fun. And um, uh, marbles can't be turned into beads because you can't put a hole in the marble, uh, Sharon, but uh, you can wrap them. Uh, I think, uh, you know, some people put them in the oven to give them that crackle effect, but then you're going to have to wrap them. Uh, with wire because there's no holes in the marbles and you can't really drill a hole. So, um, but it would not recommend because they're likely to explode. Exactly. There you go. Yeah. You could, if you guys want to look up tutorials on Google or um, YouTube for how to, how to make crackle beads, um, DIY crackle bead marbles or something, I bet you could find some information about it. But, uh, yeah, I don't know what people actually do with them. Maybe they just do it for fun. It's like people that go and put pennies on the railway tracks to to squish them. Like, my husband has done that before. So he's gone out and, and taken a penny and put it on the railway track, and it flattens. And actually, we don't even have to do that because I have a my rolling mill, you can actually um, flatten pennies and stuff with that. So, uh, because I know in the penny arcades, they have those machines that you can, um, you can, uh, I guess you put money in the machine and it'll flatten a penny for you, or, or maybe you put the actual penny. I'm not quite sure exactly what you do, but, um, but uh, it's also illegal to destroy money. So uh, I don't know the legality, legalities of that as well. So my mom's sunglasses did the same thing when they were accidentally left in a cold car. See, yeah, it's just you really got to be careful with that. And mine were my glasses. Like I could not, literally could not see without them. So that was, that was a real drag because I'm blind as a bat without my glasses. So uh, yeah, that was very inconvenient. And um, I guess I probably just had to go to the optometrist to get a new pair. But, in you know, that was a lot. That was quite a few years ago. And now uh, now you can get, you know, replacement glasses much quicker. But uh, in those days, in, back in my day, it took like two weeks to get a new pair of glasses. So that was a drag. Yeah. I made the magic spiral you had a video on. Oh, my goodness. Mustafa, please send me a photo and possibly a video 
of your magic spiral because that was so much fun. Uh, Jay sent me that idea and I thought it was super cool. And there's actually lots of different like spy, um, wire puzzles and stuff on uh, that you can see like uh, in magic stores, on the internet, on Google. So I'm going to try to make more of those puzzles because I found them super fun and it works like they, they're like, they're like um, fidget toys too, right? So, so uh, yeah, I definitely want to make more of those. So here's our flamingo so far, guys. Uh, the derailing train. Ooh, I've never heard of that. If you put money on a track, it can derail a train. I've never heard of that. Oh, well, that's news to me. I didn't know about that. Um, didn't know a little penny could make such a difference. But uh, that is good to know because... Uh, I will make sure my husband never does that again because that would be very dangerous. So let's keep going with these. We're getting there, guys. Slowly but surely, we're getting our our uh, flamingo done. And the next step is going to be to figure out how to do the neck because that might be a little more tricky. Uh, oh, here's a cute little bead, but that might be... I don't know if that's going to be the right length. That's going to be too big. So let's put another little cat's eye on there. Uh, there it is. Okay, so they're perfect. Um, to try it as... I want to try it as well. Corey, let me know if you make one because that would be super fun. Uh, Connie says, you could take Metal Gear charms and make into steampunk style or watch pieces. Cool. Yeah, steampunk stuff is awesome. Yeah, I love steam steampunk. That was one of the themes in a challenge like way many moons ago. I think that was the pendant challenge to do some some steampunk punk something. And I remember Wendy being uh, laughing about it for for months and months afterwards because she didn't uh, she didn't enjoy the steampunk challenge. But uh, but there's some really cool steampunk stuff out there for sure. So. Let's do this. Corey says, so pretty. Thank you. Coming along slowly but surely. Let's try to trying to put the beads, like push them together a little bit is tricky too because sometimes there's like little gaps. I should have maybe put a bigger bead, but that's okay. So let's just keep going with this. Uh, put another miracle bead. If I run out of wire, I will just add a little bit of wire. Maybe we can put this. I saw a long bead. Let's put the long bead on there. Put that one down there. How are we for time? Ooh, we're already an hour, but I don't know if you guys do want, let me know if you guys want me to keep going after this because I could do another one. We still didn't do the ring, so we can try a ring as well. And there's other designs that I'll probably do at a later date. I could either do another Flamingo live stream or I'll just um, do them on my own time. But let's at least get this one done and then maybe do a ring. So let's put another a bead there. Which one do we want to put? Maybe we'll put a cat's eye bead. Perfect. We're going to put our little cat's eye. And ooh, that one kind of clashes, but it's probably all right. I'm just going to bend this one here. Mark, look at my flamingo. Boy, flamingo. Yeah. Flamingo. Just showing that to Mark. He's in the kitchen yeah. making lunch. He says, c'est bien. Mark is French, so uh, I get my feedback in French. That's awesome. Uh, please keep going. I will keep going. Yes, longer videos, please. <laughs> you're, you're funny. Okay, so I will keep going at least for now. And we're going to see how we do with this. So now we're going to bring this one here. And we're going to go here. And let us... We can even... No, we'll do it this way. Okay, we're going to bring this... this I'm... I was hoping I'd be able to do like, you know what I could do? Let's try, I'm just gonna try something else. Cause if we, if we bring this one up this way, then we don't have to wind it on either side of the neck. We can try this, let's try this. So we need a maybe slightly smaller bead. Let's do this one. Okay, and we wanna work our way up and get smaller. So let's try it this way. If we put this one and just slowly make our way up, we might even be able to get away with just using this uh, one wire. We might not have to add any more wire. So either you could wind it back and forth with the wire or we can try where we just like do a whole string of beads going up. Let's try that. So and what the idea is we want to get them smaller as we go up so the neck's not too thick. 
Mm, that might be a little bit big. I just have to get another small Miracle Bead from my Miracle Bead stash. And that one's maybe a little big. I find that one a little bit big. Um, where were some of the other beads I had? So that one's that one. Let me put... Is this one too big? Let's try this one. Okay, we'll do this one. Mm, I find that a little big. I don't know. So let me just see. We'll do this one. No, uh, no, no. Okay, this is where I get very indecisive. And let me just look at my other beads. Oh, there's that one. And that one. And... Oh, I had some other, like, little faceted beads. Let me just check and see. I also have this. Wait. This one's interesting. Okay. It's kind of cool. And then we can put some... This miracle bead. And then maybe... The cat side. Just find that one. There's a cat's eye bead. I'm, oh, Peggy. Hi, Peggy. Nice. Oh, um, Mustafa dit bonjour. Bonjour, merci. Uh, he says merci, Mustafa. Thank you. Mark's eating his eggs. I can smell them. Mm. <laughs> eggs for lunch. I have salad for lunch, so. And I, I always try to... Um, stuff it down before the live stream so I'm, I'm not too late so this is coming along nicely guys the the these are getting slowly uh smaller and smaller if you run longer i don't have to move furniture around yay perfect that sounds good that sounds like a good excuse to keep going so now let's get back to this one and then we're going to maybe we could just put a big bead for the head and we'll be good so what if we did a big bead here? That's kind of cool. I don't mind that. Yay. Okay, let's just do that. And you guys can do anything you want. Like I was thinking you could do a bunch of beads and do a little one for the eye, but I don't think it's necessary. So let's just take this, make sure it's like nicely in place. And I'll just, maybe I'll just wind it underneath here to be as discreet as possible. So we're gonna just bring it here. I'm gonna wind it through the head. Okay, we're just gonna wind that through the head. This is a little tricky to wind it around. There we go. So, wind that around. Oh, my stomach's doing funny gurgly sounds. So sorry if you guys can hear that on the, um, on your end, uh, it's not because I'm hungry, because I ate uh, an hour ago. I think it's because, you know, when your body reacts to certain smells. So it's probably because my house smells like food now, because Mark just started, just did his cooking, and my stomach says, I smell food, I might want some. And I'm like, no, you do not want food, because you already ate. So there we go. Uh, still recovering, but doing okay. Oh, that's, uh, that's good. So today is a good day. That's awesome. So now we have pink flamingo so far. I could have put maybe more darker beads in there. Sometimes you look at the overall effect and think, oh, I, I could have put another miracle bead in there to make it more balanced, but that's okay. Bead for the head. Yay. Awesome. So now we need legs. I am going to just take a sip of my water. So, few solutions for legs. Let us see what we have. And I thought about a few things. I thought about chains. I thought about beads. I thought about bugle beads because the chains are kind of cute too. You could put like chains down there. Uh, or you could do it dangling beans, but I'm I, beads. I think the dangly beads might be overkill, although maybe some um, bugle beads. So if you guys want to hold tight for a second, I'm just going to go run to my uh, to Allison's bead trunk and see what I can find.
Okay, so I found my bugle beads. So let's see what we're gonna. Okay, so now, oh, puppy wants out, nice. Chain looks nice, chain is cute. Okay, cool, so let's just keep looking and we might just go with the chain. And I'm gonna just check out these beads that I have. Um, aren't they black, the flamingo legs? I don't, I don't know, I think they are black, but these might be a little bit long. Just, just for fun though, I'm just gonna pull them out and see what I have. That one's a little smaller. I have a really random collection of bugle beads, so I don't know if any of them are going to be useful or they're even gonna be the right size. So these are smaller ones are better. Whoopsies. So there's that. And then other than that, let's see what other colors I have. So I have, those are too small. Yeah, these ones I think are maybe not the right size either. Okay, those are going at the side. And uh, they are white, but not sure. Love, oh, Amber likes the, the black bugle beads. So that might be a good possibility. They're sort of an interesting contrast. These are the silver ones that are, I probably don't even have enough of them. So maybe the silver is not going to work. And then I have like purple ones, but I think they're gonna clash. But I'm pretty sure I, ooh. Well, a little long too, maybe. Let's see. Let's just take them out anyways. Um, I think I've seen flamingos with black legs before, I'm pretty sure. So let's move those. Black looks nice. And I like the silver. Ooh, this is going to be a hard choice. So if they were chains, they would be like something like this, hanging down. And then I was thinking... You don't have to decide right now. Um, ba -dum, ba -dum. I have, I was thinking like little teardrop beads maybe for the feet, but those I could also do with the bugle beads. So that was one possibility. The other possibility for feet would be hearts. Uh, so, uh, black, black. Pink and black, cool. We're getting a lot of votes for black, uh, guys. And just for future reference, uh, won't do it for this one, but for future reference, if we did like little heart feet too. So there's lots of potential here, lots of possibilities. Like say you did like little heart feet, but I think they're a little too dark anyways so like if we do like a little heart feet maybe for another one we can do that so let's remove these for a future design and then these forget these nobody like those so let's get rid of those and see what we can do with these so hmm. we could put these and then so one would go down like that and one would go like that type of thing and then feet wise um, maybe they should also have black feet because this looks maybe not so good now so let's see what we have for black uh, da, 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 da. a little black box it might be interesting um, the, for black beads uh, I could oops no those aren't even black let me just see if I have some black beads here and see what else I can have. Oh, this is fun. This is like a little glittery thing. That's cool. I have a lot of cool beads. So let's see what we have. Oh, I also have this, which is different, but that looks kind of interesting. And then we have um, spacer beads, which I can look where I put my spacer beads. So I have black. I have that, uh, yep, black and bead, black, I think that's bead feet, so let's, we're getting closer, guys, mm -mm -mm. I have spacer beads in here that I have to find, I'm due to go to my wholesaler to get more beads at some point, 
So I have a place in Montreal where I go and I get my miracle beads, which is really uh, awesome that I could go get them in person. So I also have like spacer beads. This one's maybe clunky, eh? a little bit big. And then that one is maybe a little bit small, although it's kind of cool. I have also other metal beads. Let me find them. I try to keep my beads separated into categories. So black and gold is good too. Yeah. So here is all my metal beads. And I don't know if I have anything. These are more silver. Um, this is interesting. Um, I was thinking something like more like this but that might not work either. And often with these metal beads, I don't have matching ones. That's the issue. So if I don't have two that match, that's a problem. And there we go. Ooh, oh, these are cool. They're like bead caps. That might be interesting. So let us see what we have. Okay, I haven't even figured out how I'm gonna attach them. So, I think this one's gonna get scrapped. It's a little much. Um, so we have black, we have that one. These ones are, I don't know, they're kind of cheap looking. I don't think I like those. And then there's these ones that are more like, they're kind of funky, they're like steampunky. And then these were the ones I wanted to look at. Uh, Carol, hi Carol. Yes, to the silver beads. Okay, so let's see what else we have. Sometimes when we have too much choice, because I have these two, which are really, it might even stand up on its own with those. So let's get some wire and see what's actually going to fit in those bugle beads, because bugle beads are skinny, and I'm not even sure that this wire is going to fit. This is the 22, so let's see what we have for, what we can do for this. And I also haven't figured out if they're gonna dangle or if they're gonna be um, fixed. Gun metal, yeah, this one's more like gun metal, I guess. And so say we did something like this. We wanna make a little loop on the end so it'll hold. So we'll get our round pliers. So I'm gonna move this one out of the way. That's my Mimi's plate. But there's stuff. And then uh, we're going to just take this and do a little loop here and this is instead of using a head pin you could use a head pin too and then let's just try different possibilities so say we did use this bead cap but it's might not even sit properly it might just wiggle so and then let's see if this fits on here yeah this is probably gonna fit you just got to be careful with the with the bugle beads because they're very fragile not as fragile as the crackle beads but they are fragile straighten that wire so your wire wants to be really straight to be able to get it on so that's one possibility but see it kind of does weird wiggly things I wonder if we put a bead under there it might work better let's just just because we're trying different things let me just get my beads and I have little black bead. So let me just get one of these little black beads. These are the little um, check beads, which are really great. I use a lot of the black, uh, the glass check beads for my for my work. They're really good. Oh, thanks, uh, Mustafa, for sharing the link. So Mustafa just shared the link for Discord. So if you're not on Facebook and you want to join a community, I don't use Discord as often, but I definitely post pictures of our work after the live streams uh, in there. Pretty soon I'll be doing an episode of Let's Get Wired. And what that is, is we all work on a project at the same time. So let me know in the comments if you're interested in doing a Let's Get Wired uh, a live stream, which means that we just, I put out the templates before the live stream and you guys can uh, make stuff along with me at the same time and uh, you post pictures in discord and I show them live uh, on the live stream which is really fun so we've done a few of those I think we've done about six of them so we're doing we're due to do another one and uh, yeah I'll let you guys know when that might happen so say we did the 
this is weird with this thing hanging down. It probably would work better with a head pin, but sadly my head pins are not long enough. So this is one possibility. Uh, let me just try something else to see how it would work. So let's just try one on the other side. I can, I'll, um, I'll, I'll decide after we try a few and see how they look. So I love those. So you love those ones. Cool. So, um, Miss Wee Dad hopped on. That's Amy, right? Wow. I haven't talked to you for a while. Awesome. So cleaning the kitchen. I'm so late. Oh, don't worry about it. We don't usually do them today because I usually do them Wednesdays. So this is not our usual day. So this is what, how it would be look with just that little bead, okay? It's hard to tell though. Um, okay, you know what I'm gonna do? Because sometimes it's really hard to tell. So let's just cut a few and compare them. And then I can cut another piece of wire. So let's just do this super quick. I wish I could use head pins, but I would need a head pin that's like four inches long, which I don't have. So let's do this one. Oh, and then this one too is gonna to be an issue because it's uh, it's too wide, the hole's too wide. So we've got that one, that one, and let's do another one. And then we're going to see. So we'll do another one. Let me just cut this one a little longer. Okay. And we're just going to get this one, make a little loop. Yeah, it would be really great to have a head pin, and then you wouldn't see this little loop. I could bend the loop on the side, too. It's not a huge deal. So we're going to do this one here, and Clarice, this is my favorite. Oh, nice. Yeah, Clarice, I, I thought you would like the one with the beads, because you like a lot of things with color and beads. And So here is our three possibilities so far. So let's move these. So we have, and we could probably like with this little loop we might even be able to bend it on its side so it's a little more discreet let's try that so we'll just take this one and if we bend it across hopefully it won't like show so much there we go and there we go here i mean it's it's okay either way so we have this one and then we would do like Okay, so then we would do like that one and that one. It's going to be hard for you guys to see maybe. Maybe I can bring it up closer. So there's that one, and then there's the little foot, and then there's the black foot. So I think, I think I like these two. I don't know what you guys think. Can you see those? Let me know if you can see those. Uh, just bagel bead. Hmm, little, be little bells. Oh, that would be cute loop with no bead yeah you could also do a loop you could also do that let's see with no bead you could definitely do that let me see that in fact you could maybe even use black wire or something let me just get a piece of the wire and see how that looks so if we get this one perfect and the one on the left is better so that's the one with the with the little um bead cap which is cool and different i like that too okay let's just straighten out this wire that's the trouble with the, with the um bugle beads is with the wire uh if the wire is not straight you have a lot of trouble getting it in to the to the hole so let's just see what it would look like with just a plain loop so just so you guys know like when you do it that you can yeah, I mean, there's that too. I find it a little bit plain, but you could definitely do that too. So let's see what we could do with these bead caps. And even if it's not perfect, it's it's fine. So, but do we want them dangling down or do we want them bent like the uh, like the other ones? So, so if we have, whoa, that's really long. <laughs> it's okay though. Anyways, it's fine. So let's just do that. Let's get another one. And I didn't realize how long it would be until it went on to the, um, the flamingo. So let me get a piece of wire, another one. And we might do it with two separate wires. We're gonna see uh, bent, yeah, okay. So let's do the bent one. And I will set this one up. We're gonna just, whoop, turn this one around. 
there and bend this one up just so the loop's a little more discreet. I don't know if it really matters, but and then we need another little black bead. So I'll get another little black bead of the um, check beads. I have broke a lot of bugle beads. I can imagine because they're very, very fragile. And uh, if the wire is the least bit bent, uh, that's an issue. So let's just put this one on here, the bead cap. And then I'm going to straighten this one out, clip it. So make sure it's straight enough that it won't break the bugle ble beads. Bugle beads, that's a tongue twister. And we're going to get this one. One up and one down and one bent. Yes. So let's do that. And... Sometimes if you do it like this, it's easier. You rotate it, it goes down easier. And then, oh, I could have put like a little knee bead. I didn't think about that. Put a little bead in for the knee. Although then they're gonna get like super long. Let's just see how it looks. And then see if it's worth it to put a little, a little um, a knee bead in there. So let's get these beads and put it on here. I actually also have to check my DMs because, although I guess I'll get, okay, I guess I would get a notification on my computer. Just I'm just gonna open up Facebook on another browser. So if I get a message, because I'm waiting for a message from somebody, there we go, perfect. So now, Love these, you did a great job. Thanks, Betty. So let's see how it looks with the knee bead. And just to give it a little bit more variety. Wow, these are getting long. These legs are really long now, but that's okay. So let's put this one on here. These are one inch bugle beads. So if you have like three quarters inch, might be better. A shark, ooh. I don't know if I've made a shark on my channel. I've definitely made them in the past. Uh, I'll have to see what I've done in the way of, of fish and stuff. So I've done a lot of generic fish. I don't know if I've actually done a shark though. So here's, <laughs> these are so funny. So now how are we gonna attach them so they dangle or should they dangle? I mean, I guess they should dangle. Otherwise they're gonna get like all bent all over the place. This is really cute, just like that. You can almost make it standing up. Um, so let me just see how I'm going to do this. Cause my idea was like, you put one on one side of a wire and one on the other so that they uh, are separated. Uh, I could have done the little loops, but I didn't end up doing the little loops there. So let's just go ahead and try this. Hopefully it's gonna work. I will cut this to the, let's just cut this to about half an inch. Perfect. And back and do a loop there. So now, hopefully the loop is big enough. If we put the loop here and then the other one over there maybe, or maybe a little further up. If we put the, this one here, I could try, I'm not gonna tighten it yet. So let's do this one now. So this one would have to be bent that way gently because we don't wanna bend the, we don't wanna break the bugle bead. So if we do it like that, okay. And then this one would go here and I'm gonna bend this one straight up and then we're gonna do a loop to hang it. So let's go like half an inch here. And attach them loosely. Yeah, loosely so they dangle, eh? That's a good idea. So Rainbow Obsidian. Oh my God, a flamingo. How awesome. Yay, I just found a flamingo painting that I did a few years ago. Cool, last night. Well, that's a coincidence. Gotta love the universe for coincidences like that. I love it. So now we're gonna bring this one around and we're going to put this one maybe either on this side or a little... Oh, that's pretty good. Oh, that looks really good, actually. Yep, I think that's good. So now we're going to close these loops so they stay in place. And this is where I have to look below my glasses because I have progressive glasses, but they're not always the best. So sometimes when I look up close, I just look below my glasses. And then 
it's easier. So now I've closed those loops. And then if we put these here, we might have to bend this one a little bit more. So guys, look how cute that is. And it's a brooch. So that's awesome. Whew, I need a sip of water after that. Oh boy. Mm. That was super fun. So now I promised Sharon I would try a ring. So maybe we should do that and then we can go, we can, we can uh, stop for today. So this is what we have so far, guys. We have this rose gold flamingo. We have this flamingo and we have a hot pink flamingo. So let me know which one is your favorite so far. Aw, thank you, Amy. Amy says, I did an amazing job as always. Thank you. Love this one, says Rainbow. Thank you, guys. Uh, now a ring. So the ring would have to be quite small. These were some other ideas was to put the flamingo in a frame, which actually might work better for a ring because um, it's going to be hard to make a ring that's not in a frame, although I could try it. So why don't I just try... Let's try to make the flamingo as small as possible and then see if we can put it in a frame. Uh, was first suggested by Cassandra. Okay. Oh, thank you so much, uh, Amber, for mentioning that. So Cassandra suggested a ring. Um, and I appreciate you, Amber, mentioning that because I, sometimes I miss comments. And if I do, I'm very sorry. And uh, be sure if I have missed your comment, just to comment again. So that's that's great. I love the one, uh, but I love the bead one, but can't love the other ones less. <laughs> oh, that's nice. <laughs> Fun. So now let's go ahead and make a, a flamingo as small as we can and then see what we can do to make it as a ring. So, and then that'll be a prototype and I will do tutorials for some of these. I'm actually gonna put a poll in the community section to see which one people want me to make a tutorial of because sometimes people don't wanna sit through a whole live stream to see how to make to, how to do things. So, um, so yeah, I'll do a poll and I'll do an actual tutorial. So, Bonnie says love them all, but the hot pink one the best. Cool, a simple one. Nice. Well, a lot of votes for hot pink because that was the simplest one. You guys could definitely do that one. So now let us just do a small flamingo, very small. And I'm actually going to finish it, I think, at the feet. And we'll just, so I'm going to start at the head, but I'll finish at the feet. So let's just start here. This is going to be really tricky to get it small. I am not going to do a um, eye because I think it's going to be really tiny. So if we just go here and then here and then bend this back. And, uh, perfect. So now we're going to bend this one back. Okay. Hang on a car mirror. That's a good idea. I like that. So now we're going to take this one and brand that one around. Oh, that's pretty cute already. It's going to be small. And I don't think I'm going to form the chin because that's going to like just make it really, really too much detail. So we're going to bring this one down. And then this one too, we want to bring this one around. Can we bring that one around here a little bit, around here. And then around. Okay, so there we have like the starting shape of the flamingo. I'm gonna bring this one in a little bit more. And then this one too. Bring that one out and out. Okay, so the shape's a little tricky to get when it's so small and then down. So this is sort of the shape of the of the head. There we go. And then let's do the back. So we're gonna go, I don't wanna do it too big though, that's the thing. We're gonna bring this one around and down. Okay, down there. That and down. <laughs> and then we're going to bend it back for the uh, wing, so we're going to hold this one here. I'm trying to do it as small as possible. It's not that easy, so we're going to bring that one here and down. 
Oh, the other one I had wanted to do was with a bead. So maybe I'll just do that after the live stream to do like one with a big bead in the middle because I thought that would be cute too. I mean, you could do even do it on the ring. Could be cool on the ring. Um, let me just see if we have like a bead here. Might be interesting. Okay, let's just do it. We've got nothing to lose. So we're going to take this one here and right around here where we want the bead to do be. I'm going to just bend it straight up. So we're going to bend that one up. Uh, Amy says, I miss crafts. Been working on my thesis and studying. Cool. Very nice. Good luck. That's awesome. So now this one is up here. Okay. And then we're going to bring this one around. Okay. So that's it's kind of funky. And now we're going to just, at this point at the bottom of the hole of the bee, we're just going to bend it straight down. So we've got that. And now we're just going to bring this one around. This is quite cute, actually. This would make really cute earrings just with the bead in there. I like that. And then now we want to bend this one just below the neck. It seems to, or no, it's just like around here seem to be able to like bend it down a bit. This just gives it a little bit of definition at the bottom of the neck. And then we're going to do this. And now we're just going to bend that all the way around. Perfect. And try not to distort the wire too much. So that one goes around here and push that one up. Get up there up there so there's that one I don't want to wind it around too many times or it's just going to not look right so we're going to bend that one straight down okay and there we go perfect so now we're going to bring that one up here a little bit so now this will be the beginning points I mean, I wonder if you could even maybe just put it on a ring like that or you could put it in a frame because you could put, sometimes I just take like the one wire there and one wire there. Let's make it simple. Rather than doing a big clunky frame, let's just change direction a little bit. And you could put it in a frame kind of like this one, but let's just try this a little bit doing, uh, a request if you are looking for a lighthouse. Ooh, that's a great idea. I am um, a friend of my, our neighbors actually, uh, she loves lighthouses and collects them. So that would be really interesting. So now here is the, we're going to have to just finish the feet in a way that they're um, not going to be pokey. You could put little beads there, but I think I'm just going to do little loops. So what I'm going to do is so these are the same length. We're just gonna decide of the length. And I'm gonna just bring that here and just bend that at a right angle. So now these are gonna end up being the same length. So, but what I wanna do is push that one back a bit. Now I'm gonna make little circles for the feet. So let's do that. There, yeah, yeah, so lighthouse. Don't let me forget to do a lighthouse. I will write it down so I don't, actually I'm gonna write it down right now because otherwise I will forget. So, rainbow obsidian, spell it right, a lighthouse. So a lighthouse, would it be for a earring or a pendant or an ornament let me know what it would be maybe we could do that next week on the on the live stream do you want to do it next week let me know in the comments if you guys want to do a lighthouse next week on a live stream that would be super cute i think we all need a little bit of beach vibes right now so that would be awesome we're going to bring this one around here okay and these are just our little circle plain circle feet oh my god this is the cutest thing and now I am going to cut this. Perfect. Oh, 
Whoops, I lost one. Okay, loops were my choice. Yay, awesome, Kathy. Well, thank you for suggesting the loops because uh, loops are a nice, uh, simple finish and it works well with the ring because um, it's tiny, you know? So this is a really good solution for the ring because it's small and you need a nice discreet way to finish the feet. So thank you for that, Kathy. That's awesome. We're going to click pinch that so it's flush. So there's our, our little funny feet. Whee, he's running. But now we need to bend that one uh, so it looks good. So we're going to bend that one back, straight back like we did the other one. Push it that way. Okay. And then we want to make the bend so it goes that way. So there we go. Pendant for a lighthouse necklace. Pendant would be really nice. I like that idea. I'll start doing sketches. Mustafa says, why not? <laughs> There's always something to be learned. Lighthouse for your daddy. Oh, awesome. I would love to do a lighthouse for your daddy. That would be amazing. Um, Amber, Amber uh, showed my comic book. I sent Amber a comic book and because she likes my comics. Thank you, Amber. And you said your dad really liked them. So that, that really touched me. I thought that was sweet that he liked my quirky sense of humor. That's my alter ego that... Um, that I write comics on Instagram. So if anybody has a quirky sense of humor like me and wants to check out my comics, uh, please do. So now it's at Heather Boyd Comics on Instagram. So there are the, oh, how cute is this, guys? So this might be a little awkward as a ring, but we're gonna try it. So there's, there's the uh, flamingo. Legs are maybe a little bit long, but that's okay. So let's get a piece of the, uh, 18 gauge wire for the band. I just have to find my 18 gauge wire. Mm -mm -mm. Where in the world did I put it? Uh, here it is, 18 gauge wire. So we'll just get a little piece and cut it. And there we go. We are going to baby flamingo, <laughs> cute. <laughs> So now let's bring this one around and see for the ring how we would do it. So we could just attach it, I guess, on either side there. I'm not quite sure how else we would do this. So decide what size you want. This is my one of my favorite ways to make rings because it's so easy. This works well for those all those animal head rings where you just do a very basic uh, shape out of... Uh, uh, wire, you know, for your dog head or whatever we did. We did a puzzle piece. There's other ones. And then you make a separate, like if you do the head out of 20 gauge and then you do use a separate piece of 18 gauge wire for the ring band, it just makes a nice, like simple but solid ring. So that's so fun. So Corey says, you amaze me, Heather. Oh, thank you so much. And Amy says, cute. Thank you. Uh, click the thumbs up. That would be awesome. Thank you, Rainbow, for mentioning that. Yeah, if you guys click the thumbs up button, it actually helps me a lot with the algorithm to share my channel and more people can see the videos, which is really fun. So I really appreciate your support. And if you comment on the videos too, it helps. So let's just do that. And we're going to put one on this side and hope this is going to work and one on this side. So it would go like that. Oh, this is adorable. The legs are going to be a little cumbersome, but I think it's all right. So now we want to bend this one a little bit more. Okay, we're just going to bend it out that way. And this one too, we want to bend it out a little bit more so it doesn't get distorted. So we've got what looks like that. And then we want to just push this one down. So we're just going to push it down straight down and we can almost give it a little bit of a pinch push it down a little more and then uh rio grande is a great place for wire yeah i think that's a good place to order in the states eh 34 thumbs up <laughs> fun that's it's funny eh? i don't even really look at the likes and dislikes so because sometimes people have said in the past oh that people have made a dislike or whatever on my video and I, I I honestly don't even notice I definitely appreciate the thumbs up it's uh, like I said it's very helpful for my channel and it really I really appreciate it and um but I try not to obsess too much about the numbers it's just it's just nice to get the stuff out there so there we've got to give that a little tug and we're going to clip that in there so it's flush 
Perfect, and we're almost done. So we're gonna do that one, push it in, push that one down, and then I'll take a picture of these and put them in the community section and um, on Discord as well. So here is our super adorable ring. I guess maybe if you tapped it a bit with a with a mallet, it might help it like to be a little stiffer or use a, use a slightly stiffer wire, I guess, if you can for a ring. It's, it's fragile, but it's a novelty ring. So here we go. Oh, that's interesting. Dislike is still an engagement and helps your algorithm. That is good to know. So I'm going to make some really crappy videos so they'll get pushed out on, on YouTube. Just joking. So there, guys, look at this fun flamingo ring on my nice wrinkly hands, but that's okay. So let's, uh, perfect. So that's, yeah, interesting. See, I don't know a lot about the algorithm, so that's good to know. So guys, here's all the things we made. We made the ring and we made a few pendants, a couple pendants, and we made the pin. So let me know in the comments, which is your favorite. Uh, that would be awesome. And I, I will flip the screen and say goodbye, and I will put a picture of these in the community section. So let us flip the screen. Da, 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 da. Perfect. <sighs> Hi, guys. So thank you so much for hopping on the live stream. That was crazy. It's like two hours. That was a long one, but I really appreciate you guys staying on. I'm going to take a quick pick and hop over to um, Discord. Uh, Mustafa put the link for Discord in the um, comments. And also you can find the link to Discord in all the uh, 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 descriptions of my videos. So I'll hop over now, take a picture. If you guys want to show me any pictures of your work, you can also post them in Discord in the um, share your work section. So that's awesome. I will put a poll to see if we want a tutorial for any of these as well. I also have um, more ring tutorials coming up and stuff. So I really appreciate everybody's feedback. That was so fun. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Amber and Mustafa for moderating the chat. Uh, thanks, Mustafa. Yes, don't forget to um, uh, subscribe and uh, hit that like button or the dislike button, whichever. <laughs> I guess it doesn't matter. Uh, but uh, yeah, and we'll see you guys in the Wiremakers Club on Facebook, in the Discord group, and in the community section. So have a great rest of the week, and we'll see you the next time. Bye. Oh, I think.